Hi, this is Doyle and welcome to this lesson. In this lesson, I'm going to show you a blues riff that you can use over the entire 12 bar blues form. We're going to be playing it in the key of C and for the purpose of this lesson, we will play and count with a shuffle feel in 4-4 time, otherwise known as common time. So this means that instead of counting with a straight feel, one and two and three and four and we will swing the eighth notes so we end up with more of a long short long short feeling for example one and two and three and four and which in turn equals one bar step one for step one we're going to look at a stripped down version of the right hand riff which sounds like this Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start on the note C, two octaves above middle C. So here's middle C. So we're going to start here. And what we're going to do is we're going to play C. And we're going to add the note G below this C, so this G right here. And we're going to play G and C together. From here, we're going to go down and we're going to play C on its own. Then from here, we're going to go up and we're going to play the notes F and A together. So up to that point, we have G and C, C, F and A. Then from here, we're going to play the notes E flat and G, and we're going to play E flat and G together. Then while holding down G, we're going to slide up from E flat to E. So up to that point we have G and C, C, F and A, E flat and G, then while holding down G slide up from E flat to E. Then from here we're going to play C on its own. Then from here we're going to go down to play the note B flat. Then from here down to the note G. So the riff is G and C, C, F and A, E flat and G, hold down G, slide up to E from E flat, C, B flat, G. One more time, G and C, C, F and A, E flat and G, slide up from E flat to E, C, B flat, G. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the fingers I'm using to play this stripped down version of the riff in the right hand. To do this, we're going to number the fingers on both hands. So what we're going to do is we're going to call the thumb finger one on both hands, the index finger on both hands finger two, the middle finger on both hands finger three, the ring finger on both hands finger four, and the little finger on both hands finger five. So we have fingers one, two, three, four, five. So the fingers I'm using to play this stripped down version of the riff, I'm playing G and C with fingers two and five. I'm playing C with finger one, F and A with fingers three and five, E flat and G with fingers two and four. Then I'm sliding up from E flat with finger two. I'm playing C with finger one, B flat, you can either use finger two or finger three for B flat, then G, finger one. So again, the fingering is two and five, one, three and five, two and four, two, one, and then I prefer two on B flat, and then one on G. So one more time, the fingering is two and five, one, three and five, two and four, slide up to E with finger two, one, I'm going to use finger two on B flat, and then finger one on G. To count to this riff, as eighth notes with a shuffle feel, you would count one and two, and three and four and again one and two and three and four and 
And notice that this riff is one bar long. So one and two and three and four. Now what we're going to do is we're going to repeat the riff a second time round. This time starting one octave below than where we actually begin. So we begin here. So the second time round when we play the riff, we're going to start here. So now we have one and two and three and four and. Then we repeat the riff again, but this time from here, one and two and three and four and. So now we have two bars of the riff. Bar one. Bar two. Then to give it resolution, what I'm going to do is when I get to the end on this G, I'm simply going to play this C here on its own. And this C will be on beat one of bar three. So now we have bar one, so one and two and three and four and then bar two, one and two and three and four and, and then on beat one of bar three, I'm simply going to play the note C. And you can use finger three, finger five, whichever finger feels more comfortable to you to play that C. So all together, the stripped down version of the riff sounds like this, bar one, bar two, and then finish with C on beat one of bar three. So again, one, bar two, One more time. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Step two. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we can add a few extra things just to embellish this riff so it sounds a little more interesting. So the first thing we're going to add is a grace note. And we're going to add the grace note when we play the note G and C together at the beginning of the riff. And what we're going to do is we're going to add the note G flat. When we play C, we'll play G flat, but we'll quickly slide into the G from G flat. So we get this sound. And what I'm doing is I'm using the same finger, finger two, that I play G with to play G flat. And I'm kind of just swiping the finger of the edge of the G flat into the G. And you can practice it just like this. So again, you play G flat at the same time you play C and you quickly slide into the G. So this now sounds like this. And then the second time around, you do it again. So all together, it sounds like this. The other thing we're going to do is when we get to E flat and G, which is on the end of B2, so one and two and. So we're on the end of B2. Instead of holding down this G and just simply playing E, what we're going to do is when we play E flat and G, we're going to lift off G when we slide up to the E from the E flat. So, and then from here, we're going to play G on its own and then E on its own before going to C. So now we end up with. And you'll want to play this C on the end of beat three. So if we go one, and two and we're on the end of B2 you want to slide up from E flat to E play G play E and then hit C on the end of B3 so a way to practice this you could count two and three and again two and three and one more time two and three 
So a little faster. Two and three and. Two and three and. Two and three and. So in context, it sounds like this. One and two and three and four and. And then one and two and three and four and. And a little faster. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. So again, just make sure that you hit this C on the end of beat three. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So now we have the embellished version of the riff. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Now one more thing we're going to add is at the very end when we play C on beat one of bar three. Instead of playing C on its own, I'm going to add the note G below this C. So now we end up with one, so that's bar one, bar two, then the beginning of bar three, G and C together. Step three. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the left hand pattern we'll be using with this right hand riff. So what we're going to do is we're going to play three separate patterns in the left hand. The first pattern will be over C, which sounds like this. The second pattern will be over F and it sounds like this. And then the third pattern will actually be over D and G, however I've put them together to make one pattern and it sounds like this. So first off, what we're doing is we're playing broken octaves in the left hand. And what that means is we're playing a bass note and then we're playing the exact same note one octave above. So we get this sound. So firstly, let's look at the notes when we're playing the pattern over C in the left hand. So the note for the pattern over C in the left hand is C, E, G, A, B flat, A, G, E. Again, that's C, E, G, A, B flat, A, G, E. The fingers I'm using to play this pattern, I'm using the little finger to play the bass note and then I'm using the thumb or finger one to play the note one octave above. Little finger thumb, little finger thumb, finger five, finger one, 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 finger five, finger one. To count to this as eighth notes with a shuffle feel, you would count one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and again one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and notice that the octave note always lands on the end of the beat and the bass note the lowest note is on the actual beat so beat one and then the end of beat one beat two the end of beat two and so on also notice that the bass pattern is two bars long bar one bar two 
So that is the bass pattern we'll be using over C. C, E, G, A, B flat, A, G, E. Now let's take a look at the bass pattern we'll be using over F. So F, we're going to start with the note F, and the notes are F, A, C, D, E flat, D, C, A. Again, the notes over F in the left hand are F, A, C, D, E flat, D, C, A. And again, we're using the little finger or finger five and the thumb or finger one to alternate between the notes. And just like with C, we play the lower note on the beat and we play the octave note on the end of each beat. So beat one, the end of beat one, beat two, the end of beat two, and so on. So again, the notes for F are F, A, C, D, E flat, D, C, A. And to counter this as eighth notes with a shuffle feel, you would count one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One more time. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Okay, let's look at the third pattern, which is actually two patterns stitched together to make it easier for you to learn. And this is the pattern over D. So what we're going to do is we're going to start on the note D. And the notes for the third pattern are D, E, F, F sharp, G, F, E, D. Again, the notes are D, E, F, F sharp, G, F, E, D. And just like with C and F, we'll be playing finger five on the lower note and finger one on the note an octave above. So finger five, finger one, finger five, finger one, and so on. To counter this pattern, you would count one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So again, we're playing the lower note on the beat and we're playing the octave note on the end of each beat. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So the three patterns we have are the pattern, the left hand pattern for C, which is C, E, G, A, B flat, A, G, E. The pattern for F in the left hand and the notes are F, A, C, D, E flat, D, C, A. And then the pattern over D and the notes are D, E, F, F sharp, G, F, E, D. Step four. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put the left hand patterns that we've just learned in step three in the order that we'll be using them throughout the 12 bar blues. So what we're going to do is we're going to play four bars of C, then we're going to play two bars of F, then we're going to play two bars of C, two bars of D, then two bars of C. So this means because each pattern is two bars long, we're going to start by playing the pattern over C in the left hand, and we're going to play that pattern twice. So bar one, bar two, then we repeat the pattern, bar three, bar four, then we want to play the pattern over F twice, sorry, once, so we end up with two bars, so bar five, bar six, 
then we'll play the pattern in C once, so bar 7, bar 8, then we'll play the pattern over D twice, oh sorry, once again, so bar 9, bar 10, and then we'll play C once, the pattern once, so we end up with two bars, so bar 11, bar 12, and then you can just end with a low C. So again, the order that we're going to play the left hand pattern is four bars of C, two bars of F, two bars of C, two bars of D, and then two bars of C. So we play the C pattern twice, second time, we play the F pattern once, play the C pattern once, play the D pattern once, and then the C pattern once. ending with a low C. So there are two ways you can think of the pattern over the 12 bar blues. If you're thinking of the individual patterns in the left hand, you would want to think of it as you play the C pattern twice, then you play F once, the C pattern once, then you play the D pattern once, and then you play the C pattern once. So that's twice, Then the F pattern once, C pattern once, D pattern once, and then the C pattern once. In terms of the 12 bar blues, you would play four bars of C, two bars of F, two bars of C, two bars of D, and then two bars of C. So, bar one, bar two, bar three, bar four, bar five, bar six, bar seven, bar eight, bar nine, bar ten, bar eleven, bar twelve, ending with a low C. Step five. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put the stripped down version of the riff with the left hand bass pattern throughout the 12 bar blues. But before we do that, let's look at how both hands fit together. So the good thing about the riff in the right hand and the left hand bass pattern is that they both are played as eighth notes. So in the left hand, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and in the right hand it's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and so this means that each time you play a note in the left hand you'll also play a note in the right hand so to practice what you want to do is make sure you can play each hand separately to begin with and it doesn't matter how slow you're playing, it doesn't matter even if you're going this slow. In fact, you should actually start at that speed. So what you want to do is each time you play a note in the left hand, you play a note in the right hand. So let's go through counting very, very slowly the 12 bar blues on. So one, and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and then you'll try and do that again, but this time do it with F. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and back 
to C. One. And again, try it over D. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. So again, practice very slowly with the individual bass lines with the right hand riff. Once you can do that, you might feel comfortable trying the, the embellished riff. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. So that's the only part that doesn't match up with a note in the left hand. But as long as you remember that you need to play the C on the end of beat 3, it'll match up with whichever note you're playing on the left hand. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to play the stripped down version of the right hand riff. And we're going to play the riff on bars 1 and 2, 5 and 6, 9 and 10. So bars 1 and 2, 5 and 6, 9 and 10. So this means that we would count each bar, bar one, bar two, bar three, bar four, and then bars five and six, bar five, bar six, bar seven, bar eight, bar nine, bar ten, bar eleven. Bar 12. So again, we're playing the riff on bars 1 and 2, 5 and 6, 9 and 10. So now I'm going to play through, and I'm also going to add the note C at the end of each time playing a riff on the new bar. So, bar 1, bar 2, bar 3, bar 4, bar 5. Bar 6, bar 7, bar 8, bar 9, bar 10, bar 11, bar 12. So let's try that again, this time with the embellished riff. So bar 1 and 2, bars 5 and 6, bars 9 and 10, we play the riff. So bar 1. Bar two, bar three, bar four, bar five, bar six, bar seven, bar eight, bar nine, bar ten, bar eleven, bar twelve. Step six. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same, but this time we're going to fill in the gaps from the left hand pattern when we don't play the riff. So this means that on bars 4, 8 and 12, we're going to simply play the note G and C when we finish the riff. simply going to fill in the gaps with the note G and C and I like to use finger 2 and finger 5 for G and C and we're going to play G and C on beat 1 and on the end of beat 2 on bars 4, 8 and 12. So for example we're still playing the riff on bars 1 and 2, 5 and 6, 9 and 10 but on bars 4, 8 and 12 we're going to play on beat 1 on the end of beat 2, G and C. So let me play through slowly first. So bars 1, bar 2, bar 3, and then on bar 4, so bar 4, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and then bar 5 and 6, 5, bar 6, Bar 7, and then again on bar 8, so 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and, and bars 9 and 10, and bar 10, bar 
number 11. And then again on bar 12, so 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. So again, we play G and C on beat 1 and on the end of beat 2 on bars 4, 8 and 12. So all together with the simple stripped down version of the riff, we have bar 1, bar 2, bar 3, bar 4, bar 5, bar 6, bar 7, bar 8, bar 9, bar 10, bar 11, bar 12. And you may have noticed, I think on bar 8, I actually played G and C on a different beat. And that's something you can do once you feel more comfortable. You can play the G and C wherever you feel like you want to play it. Um, so again, I'm going to play through again, but this time I'm going to play the embellished version of the riff. I'm going to play slowly, the embellished version of the riff, and I'm going to add G and C, and I might mix it up a little bit of where I add them on bars 4, 8 and 12. So bar 1, bar 2, bar 3, bar 4, bar 5, bar 6, bar 7, bar 8, bar 9, bar 10, bar 11. And if you wanted to, you could just keep going around the 12 bar blues again instead of ending on C. So to demonstrate I'll play it one more time with the I'll play it twice actually I'll play with the stripped down version then the embellished version a second time around. So So again, you might have noticed me playing G and C at different places, and you also might have noticed the bass pattern. Instead of going down here, I carried on going up. So again, there's many different things you can do with this riff and that bass pattern, many different variations. But I hope you got something from this lesson um, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.